In this lesson, you are going to learn about the Spring Web Client. Now, in this particular example, we have two Spring projects. This is the first, which is acting as the server we are going to query. In this server, we have a person Pojo class that has an ID, name, age, and country. So you can see this is a normal Java class, but we have some extra methods attached to it. So you can see three other extra methods. And then we have a static list below. Now I just created this list to act as our in quotes database. So this has a list of person objects. I am using the Guava library so that I can create a simple mutable list. Normally, if I use arrays as list, it wouldn't create a mutable list. So I'll list down the Guava library in the description. Also, we have three methods. One to get a person using an ID. The next to get all people. So I simply return the list and then the third to add a person to the list. I add the at JSON ignore on top of the method so that it is ignored when serializing and deserializing this object of a class. So let's look at the controller. So in this controller, I have a person object created above. You have the part person slash ID. And after that, you would see a simulate delayed processing. So what does that mean? That is just a simple method I created below delay for five seconds. So it's meant to kind of simulate how servers might behave in real life when there is a delay. I have the slash people and slash person part, which are both get mapping and post mapping respectively. The first returns a list of all the people, while the second adds a person to the list which we created earlier. So now let's go to the client. This is the second project, which is going to be querying the first server we just saw earlier. In this project, this is where we're going to implement the Spring Web Client. This is going to run on port 8081 because by default, the former one is going to run on 8080. So we'll make this one 8081. So both of them can run at the same time. I also have a dependency here, which is the Spring Boot Starter Web Flux dependency. That is going to allow me work with the Spring Web Client. We also have the Person Pojo class here which has ID, name, age, and country. Of course, this doesn't have all those extra methods because all we need the class for here is when we query the server, we want to be able to deserialize the response that we get. So let us check the controller. We have a couple of methods here. I will show you the difference between using REST templates and the web client. This get mapping call will collect three IDs in the path variable and send that three IDs to a method called get person with template. After that, it will return a string which says processing with rest template. So let's open the method get person with template. So in get person with template, we have an initial printout 
the reason I did that was so that I would know that the code being printed is from REST templates. So I wrote T and dot. And then we have our URI, which is of course localhost port 8080. Then we have our REST template object. Now, what are we doing with those IDs? We're going to query the server to give us the person with those IDs. So we're going to make three calls. The first call, second call, and third call. Those three calls are the same. The only difference is that they are calling using different IDs. So we're going to run this code and look at how long it will take. Remember that in the server, before it returned a result, there was a delay. And remember that our delay was for how many seconds? Yeah, it was for five seconds. So we can run this server. This server will be running on port 8080, which is the default. So this server has started. So let's go back to the client. We can run this client, which is also a server kind of, but we're using it to make a request to the first server. Now, let's run it. So we're going to call localhost port 8081. And then we're passing the IDs. Can you see how long it's taking? We're still waiting. And boom, you finally see processing with REST template. So let's go and see the outputs in the console. We can see the three people printed out. That was printed out due to the system.out.println command we had in the method. With each call, we had a printout statement. So those were the three people that were printed out. So what we will do is to run this program again. Let's, let us make another call and then view how it is being printed in the console. So we just change the IDs and call it again. So you can see the first line T has been printed out. Uh-huh, we have our first person our second person just came and the third person just came. So now that we have seen how REST template behaves, let us check how our web client is going to behave. So with the web clients, I have the same structure. You call it and then it calls a method called get person with reactive. So let's see what's inside this method. Inside this method, I have a first printout, which is R and some dots to signify that this is the reactive call. Now, I have a first call. But where did this web client object come from? Actually, had created a web client object above. So I have the URL and then I use web client dot builder dot the base URL. So what I am putting there is the base URL. Then I say dot build. There are different ways of creating a web client object. I'll put a link below to some beautiful articles to help you. For now, this is how we're going to use it. And it works just fine. 
Now, let me explain what's going on here. It's quite simple. We want to make a GET request. So we say webclient.get. That signifies we want to make a GET request. Then the next command is the URI. Where is the path in addition to the base URL? Are we querying? So I'm querying slash person slash ID. You see a second slot there for a variable. That object is going to be used in the placeholder ID. Now, if there wasn't any path variable, I wouldn't need that. The next is what type of media are we accepting? We're accepting JSON objects. So that is it. Then the next command is retrieve. Retrieve simply says, when you query this path, just give me the body. I don't want to know about the response status or the status of the request. Just give me the body. There is one called exchange, which will give you more information about the call. Retrieve simply gives you the body. Now, you have body to mono. Body to mono is saying, how do I deserialize this response? So we're going to use the person.class. Remember we have a class here, which we're going to use to convert to a person object. Now, there is body to flux and body to mono, but we will talk about that very soon. Then we have a subscribe. If I didn't call subscribe, this call wouldn't run. Subscribe is what kickstarts this request. And when you call subscribe, just simply saying, when this request is ready, what should I do with the response? So I'm simply saying, print out the response. So you could use the response to do something else. Maybe save it in a database. But for now, I am just printing it out. And that is the same for the other request. The only difference between this and the other request is that the other request uses the different IDs. When we call it, we can see the output. That was fast. So let's see what happened in the console because it returned the text a lot faster. So let's call it again and see how the console behaves. So let's go to the console. So we can see an R printed out and boom, the names just appeared. That was quite fast. So let me explain what happened. Now, with reactive, it is non-blocking. What do I mean by non-blocking? When one request is waiting for a response, it will go to the other request and start processing them. So I have three requests here. Remember that the server delays for five seconds. Now with rest templates, that will mean five, 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 a total of 15 seconds. But with web clients, it will call the first. And while the first is still waiting, it will go to the second. And then go to the third. When the first is ready to respond, the code you wrote in subscribe will execute. Subscribe is saying, when you're ready, do this. So I don't need to wait for you to be ready. Let me go on and execute the next command. So this way, the application is reactive and non-blocking. Now, that is why immediately I called this a return processing with web client because it made the three calls and it was done with the method and it came down and returned this text. It returned the text even before the result was ready.
That was because he didn't have to wait for the results. He moved on. On large scale application, this is very helpful. So let's look at how to post. So remember our server has a method to accept post request. With web client, the post is similar. Now I created a new person object that I am going to post. So I say web client dot post signifying I want to post. Then I specify the URI I want to post to. Then I have what I call body. In this body, I do mono dot mono dot just, which is going to post the person. And then I say person dot class, which is the class of this object I am posting. And then I say exchange. Remember before I said retrieve. Exchange gives me access to a client response object. In this client response object, I have access to the body of the response. I also have access to extra information such as status code. So if I just wanted the body, I would just say retrieve. But let's say you wanted extra information like what is the status code of this request? You can say exchange. Now we have a third request, which is get people. Now this is different from get person because this is getting a list of people objects. So let's see how it differs. So we have our web client dot get and then the URI. Of course, we're accepting JSON and we just want the body. We don't want the status. So I would say retrieve. And then you see body to flux. Body to flux is saying, hey, the response I am getting is a list of person not just one person because this request is going to give us a list of person objects. Subscribe means when you have made this request for each person in this flux, print out or do this, execute this code. Now we're going to test this, this particular request and see the output. To test that request, I'll say slash people. And remember that the server delays. Okay, we can see the outputs of people. And that is very nice. Now you might say, what if I decide to change this to body to mono. Let's say one morning you just feel like being stubborn. So you change it to mono. What's going to happen? Now, let's see for ourselves. Now, if I try to run this again, let's go back. So, of course, the server is going to waste some time and boom. You can see some errors. You can see cannot deserialize instance. So we have an issue deserializing. So you have to be aware of the type of response you're getting. If you're getting a list of a particular object, then you use body to flux. This is just a brief introduction. I'm going to put in some wonderful articles where you can go in depth into Spring Web Client. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.